Welcome back, you guys. So, have you ever destroyed your almost perfect skim coat by trying to fix a couple of little things? Now, just this morning, I opened up my email and I got a message from somebody who's going through just that. So I'm gonna read this to you guys and then we're gonna head out to the garage because I've been procrastinating on finishing it so I have the perfect opportunity to show you guys exactly how to cause the problem, how to avoid the problem, and how to solve the problem. Okay, so Stephen from Victoria writes, I watched your video today about installing drywall board backwards. I was very interested in your comment about compressing the final top coats and how this creates a hard layer over a soft layer. I keep running into this problem and it drives me nuts. While skim coating the whole wall, when I try to do spot repairs, I have this problem. I end up with subtle ridges from different layers. I definitely experienced this in the early days of learning how to do drywall finishing. He describes it almost like a contour map. Do you guys get what I mean? There's these little raised ridges all over the place. It's very subtle, but when a light goes down the wall, it looks horrific. Sometimes I have to re-skim the whole wall again to solve the problem. And if that needs repairs, well, things get worse instead of better. So yes, that's true. And I think what's going on here is he's continuing to recreate the same situation that caused the problem. Now, the solution is that you do have to re-skim the whole wall. And if there's touch-ups after that, you have to do it after primer. Anyways, um, all of this is kind of just talking. Why don't we get into the garage and actually see how to avoid or solve the problem? So right here we have the three patch wall, the one where I showed you guys how not to coat drywall. So I ended up giving it a sand and one more coat. Normally that would be good enough. But when I shine my light on the wall, I can see that there's a bit of a ridge there. And so I just wanna give it one more coat, running my trowel horizontal instead of vertical like I usually do to just get rid of that. But before I do that, I'm gonna sand this wall as close as I can get to perfection, and then we're gonna put some touch-ups on here and see how we cause that ridging mistake. So usually I get really good results with the Festool. I think I need to change the sanding pad today because I was left with a bunch of little grooves. So we can clearly see these lines right here because of the skylight above me shining the light down. And if I don't do anything about that, guaranteed it's gonna show through the paint. So let's suppose that that's the only part of the wall that needs any touch-ups. Now, 99% of people that are new to drywall, but maybe have a little experience, are going to do this. So what they will do is they will put the material on and then because they don't wanna do a whole bunch of sanding, what they'll do is they'll wipe it off really hard. So let's do a few spots so we can really see this whole layering thing in action. So what we need to know is when you wipe the mud on to your sanded coat and you compress the mud by pushing really hard like a skim coat, you're making this mud right here way harder than the surrounding mud. So we'll see what happens when we come back to sand. Maybe let's do another one right here so they're all kind of close together. And people do this, the reason they do this is because they think, well, I don't want to sand a lot. It's got to be flat. So they wipe it super tight thinking that they're going to have to sand very little. Now we should do a third one, I think. Maybe right here, oh, sorry, a fourth one. Now on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be wiping it so hard. So hopefully I don't get a bunch of bubbles that'll kind of mess it up. But on this one, I'm actually gonna be leaving it built up a little bit. I'm not wiping those edges hard. Maybe I'll get you guys a little bit closer. So on this one, I'm gonna start again a little bit and get a little bit higher up, but I'm being very careful to not wipe super hard and let any of these edges get compressed. I'm just kind of letting it float over top. None of that mud's getting compressed. This is probably still gonna cause me a problem, but normally I would do this on unsanded drywall mud. So these little spots are dry now, and I'm now gonna show you the best and worst way to try to sand a touch-up on an already sanded wall. 
Okay, you guys, this lighting's impossible and it's super hard to show, but here is the smooth part of the touch-up and here is the previously sanded surface. And the worst way to sand it is with a sanding sponge. Right here, we can see that that's just not wanting to sand away. Some parts of it did okay, but right here is just not going away. It's a lot better, but it's still just kind of there. What do you say we try this big ugly one? Let's see what we can do there. Guys, I'm actually having a hard time screwing this up. Okay, this one's getting it. Let's zoom in a little right there. So on top, we can see the smooth compressed mud, and then we can see the stuff that's sanding easier. So this is the kind of ridges that we're talking about. Well, this is a little bit annoying to me because like one, it's really hard to register on film, and two, I know that this problem is not as severe as it is when you guys are experiencing it and like I did in the beginning of my career. So let's troubleshoot a few of the things that could really amplify this problem. So one of the reasons it's not really bad is I'm using the exact same mud. Like it's actually the same mix, so it's the same consistency. If say your touch-up mud is thicker or it's like a different type of mud, so this is topping and I'm also doing my touch-up with topping, but let's say you did your final coat with topping, but then you did your touch-ups with all-purpose, or even worse, some sort of painter's spackle, that's like the biggest no-no you can do, is to take painter's spackle because it's way harder to sand than drywall mud. So if you're touching up with that sort of stuff, it's gonna be a nightmare. It's literally gonna leave islands on your wall where all your touch-ups are. But again, yeah, I'm just, I'm not really struggling here because I'm using both of the same types of muds and um, the little bits that I'm getting would show on a super well lit wall, like say if you had a raking sunset glancing across the wall, but generally, no, it's not a big problem. Um, getting back to one of the reasons that this can happen pretty badly is sanding with a sanding sponge doesn't work well because the sanding sponge bends and conforms to the wall and to the pressure you put on it with your hand. So when you're trying to grind out those little ridges, what's happening is you're just digging out the softer material even more. And I think I was doing kind of a bad job sanding because I was holding the sanding sponge really flat. Like I do all of this stuff instinctually, so it actually makes it hard for me to mess this up. But yes, grinding away at that edge with the sanding sponge and like pushing hard on it, that's for sure gonna hollow out the softer mud faster. My preferred tool to use for sanding touch-ups is just a regular old pole sander because it's nice and flat and it spreads the weight out evenly. So even if your muds are a little bit different in texture and consistency, they're both gonna sand kind of the same. So let, let's get to this one last ridge that I left. And this is the mud that I didn't compress. I'm gonna sand that with a pole sander and we'll see how it looks. I'm starting with the pressure, so the actual, this part of the pole, I'm not letting this part of the pole go past here very much because as soon as this goes past here, it's gonna put pressure on the less strong mud. So I'm sanding here to keep it really flat. And it's almost totally gone. Needs a little bit this way to get rid of a bit of a line right here that's probably hard to see. But that's almost 100% gone. It's still not perfect though. Like right here, here's the soft mud, here's the harder mud but on almost any wall, this is gonna be more than good enough. All right, let's get back to some of the solutions. So you did your final coat, you sanded everything, then you did your touch-ups before painting, tried to sand them, and you wound up with ridges all over the place. What do you do now? So unfortunately, the only actual solution is to skim the whole thing again. 
you're never going to get rid of those ridges of super compressed mud if you're actually having like a serious problem, unlike the little ones that I did here. Now how you can avoid this in the future is don't do touch-ups on sanded mud, ever. So before you go around and do your final sand, if you see any spots that you can tell are going to need to be touched up, touch them up then with a light hand so that you're not compressing the mud. And then when you come back with the sanding pole and do your final sand, it should sand right out. That's how I usually do it. But alternatively, the other thing you can do is just make sure you do all your touch-ups after you prime it. So sand it out, prime everything, and then start doing touch-ups. That's going to be the most foolproof method for most people. The only thing you wanna make sure of is that like your walls need to be flat enough before priming, and it should just be small deficiencies like scratches, nicks and dings, uh, porosity, like little bubbles and stuff. That stuff can all be fixed really easily after priming. What you don't want to be fixing after priming is lumpy, uneven walls. Like at that point, you just didn't actually do a good enough job floating and sanding and then, you know, all that stuff. Like you didn't make flat walls. It's gotta be flat before you prime. Anyways, I need to get to skimming this whole wall and then I'm gonna show you guys how I like to touch up things before sanding. And I have the perfect spot right here where there seems to be either a blister or some delaminated mud. Something's going on right here. So I'm gonna carve it out a little bit and we'll touch that up later because it's not going to be totally flush after my skim coat. Yeah. And now you guys, as much as I would love to keep the camera rolling and show you all the skim coating and stuff, we've got enough videos about that and I do like to try to stay on topic. You may notice that I'm going horizontal today and like I said, I just felt like because I did two passes vertically that it wasn't quite flat enough and because all of the light in this place shines down, it really shows it if it's not totally flat um, on a horizontal plane. Whereas in most cases, you usually just have light coming from the side showing if you have stuff that's not even on the vertical plane. Anyways, that's why I'm gonna be skim coating this whole thing horizontally this time, just to give it that extra, that extra little bit. Oh, and getting back to one of my favorite comments recently was, it was from the mesh tape, can you patch with mesh tape and all purpose video. Somebody goes, Ben, that was so extra of you to sand that little patch with the fest tool. <laughs> yes, it was very extra of me. <laughs> Anyways, at the risk of having too much extra footage in this video, I'm gonna cut to tomorrow when I'm sanding and painting this. I just actually thought of one more thing. Remember that little touch up, that little bit that I ground out with my knife? I'm actually gonna do that right now. As we can see, it's already shrunk. Now the mud's just dry enough that I can kind of touch it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get just a little bit of mud on the corner of my blade. And now I'm just gonna really carefully, and people might think I'm insane to leave a blob of mud like this on my wall, but it's not compressed. This mud here wasn't compressed. It's gonna sand at exactly the same rate. So you kind of have a couple of choices. You can either do it like I did when it was still just mostly dry, or you can wait for it to actually be dry and then do a touch up. But this is generally how I do touch ups. I kind of lump it on, not usually this big. The only reason it's that thick is because it needs to be thick so that it can actually shrink. And when I sand it flat, it ends up all flat. Because otherwise, if I wiped it flat on here and I came back and sanded, I would still have an indent when it finished shrinking. So this is to account for shrinkage. But if it was something more just like scratches, I definitely wouldn't have lumped it on like this. I would have wiped it on a little more gently and a little thinner. But again, being careful not to compress the mud. Okay, you guys, this is had a chance to dry overnight. We got my little blob right here, which is totally dry. And just to prove a point, 
and show you guys how I normally touch stuff up because this is when I catch it while the wall is still wet and if it's a little bit deeper. But let's say we just have an annoying little scratch. Ah, oh, no. Why are you doing that to the wall? Oh, I think I could probably sand those out. Let's, ah, there we go. That's pretty bad. Okay, so let's just give this a little mud. So this is like, this, let's say you catch something on sanding day. We're just gonna, I can even feather a little bit. It's not a big deal. All right, that should be enough. And I'm just gently feathering the edges, trying hard not to compress the mud. I'm just gonna leave that, that's good enough. So I'm now gonna have lunch and coffee to give this enough time to dry off. Cause usually when I do this, like I'll go look through some rooms, I'll start touching up some stuff. And honestly, within about half an hour, usually something like this is dry enough to sand. So. That's why I don't usually find it too hard to do basic touch-ups on sanding day. Almost dry. I had coffee and lunch, but wasn't quite long enough. But it will be in about 10 more seconds. Okay, let's check these out and see if we can sand them real nice without being able to see it through paint. So I have here some 180 grit sandpaper, foam back sandpaper, nice fresh new pad. This is gonna do a real good job. All right, this should be pretty obvious. I mean, there's our lines, right? Hopefully it can be seen. The horizontal ones are easier to see because of the lighting. As we can see, it sands away like nothing was ever there at all. And we got a pretty smooth skim coat in general here that I need to sand. There's not much to see. The further back you step, the less there is. I better get to sanding this whole wall. I'm gonna roll some paint on it and then we'll take one more look at it. And I don't think there's gonna be anything to see. I'm pretty sure I have completely covered the how not to touch up and how to touch up, you know, just all of it. Like, that's it. Anyways, sanding time. Going real slow today. And yes, yes, I'll do dust protection once I turn the camera off.
You guys, this is finally done. I'm really happy about this because I had been procrastinating forever and I was like in the middle of a really long edit that I didn't think I was going to get ready for a weekly upload. And then I got that email asking about the touch up question. So let's take a look at this wall. I mean, honestly, I can't even find those spots I touched up anymore, but let's, let's see if we can find anything. Okay. So let's get a nice close look at this right now. I'm about five feet away. There's really nothing to see. Shadows are doing some interesting things, but let's check out that texture. So as we can see, there's nothing. And I can't even find the actual spot where I did those touch ups. I think it was around here. Like if we take a real up close look, I'm about six inches away. I'm trying to move really slow so that you can actually scope it out. There's just nothing. I'm sure they were somewhere in this two foot vicinity that I was checking. It's just not here. So I think it's worth really quickly recapping what to do so you don't make those mistakes with touch ups. Okay. So first of all, never ever try to touch up sanded mud. Like if there's one rule, I just wouldn't ever do that. Make sure you prime it before you try touching it up. Second, if you're going to touch it up before priming, make sure you do it before sanding. Use a light touch. Make sure you're using the same kind of mud. And let's get into those details a little bit more. So you might even want to make sure that that mud is thinned down a little bit more than the stuff you put on the wall, because the more you thin down mud, the easier it is to sand. So that will help ensure that the mud you put on top is going to be a little bit softer, or you could even go a further length. And if you used all purpose on your wall, you could then touch up with something like topping mud if you have the option to, but generally speaking, just thinning your touch up mud down a little bit more than what you had to work with on the wall is going to help out. Third, make sure whatever you sand with is nice and flat and those foam backed sanding pads. I mean, it really doesn't get any better than that. So if you're getting a ridge and you're trying to grind it away with a sanding sponge, it's only going to get worse. Just stop and re skim the wall. It's time to do that. If you've gotten that far. Anyways, you guys, that's it. Like that is, you know, all of the nuances I can think about when it comes to touching up drywall. I know some people will probably be talking about Ben. What about adding um, tint to your mud? So like blue chalk. Now I'm not a big fan of that. I think there's a risk that it might make it actually ridge a little bit more because I, the worst ridging I've seen has been from crews that used blue tint in their mud. Now that could just be that they didn't actually know the nuances of how to touch up because a lot of people don't. So I believe that is finally it. And this wall is finally done. I can put my gym back together. I'm really excited about this. You guys may be wondering why I'm fussing so much about a wall in my garage. And it's because this wall is so well lit. And when I'm lifting weights, I want to make sure that I'm not looking at things that distract me. So I'm facing here and I don't see any work that needs to be done. There's nothing that's saying like, oh, that should be sanded. Oh, that should have been repainted. Oh, there's a blister there. There's a nail pop there. Like I need to be, um, in order to be Zen, <laughs> When I'm working out, I, I need some pretty decent conditions. I need a nice space. So that's why I have fussed so much on this side. I know it seems like overkill. And if I was truly Zen, I'd be able to handle it in whatever condition it was, but I guess I'm not. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I really hope you got a lot out of this video. I want to say thanks to Steven for the inspiration to this video. I hope it helps a lot of you and you guys, I hope your project is going really well, but I hope you're doing even better. Thanks for watching till the next video.